Welcome to the CASA application for instructors presentation. This presentation will give you a general understanding of how the electronic format for CASAs work. This is what we will be going over in today's presentation. What is CASA, outcomes and abilities and assessment periods, how to access the CASA system, CASA for the clinical instructor, which will include completing a CASA, unsafe practice policy, supplemental document, and clinical learning summary. So what is CASA? CASA stands for Collaborative Assessment of Student Abilities and is an online standardized assessment for all clinical courses in the Faculty of Nursing at the University of New Brunswick. There are two types of CASAs, Regular Assessment, which will use the full CASA document, and the Clinical Hours Only CASA, which, as the name suggests, only records the clinical hours. CASA is a self-assessment tool for students. It is a web-based program, extremely user-friendly and accessible anywhere with an internet connection. As you are aware, clinical courses within the Faculty of Nursing are comprised for assessment purposes of abilities and outcomes. Through confidential analysis, the Faculty of Nursing has identified five domains of ability that are addressed in our program. These include knowledge in its application, knowledge-based practice, skills of analysis, critical thinking, communication, professional identity and ethics, and social justice, effective citizenship. Each course has identified learning outcomes to be assessed, and these have been mapped to ensure that within each year of the program, all abilities-based learning outcomes for that year have been addressed. The course outcomes are housed in the course blueprints, which can be found on D2L. There are two assessment periods assigned to each regular clinical course, midway and final. The assessment period live and end dates are assigned by the system administrator. You want to make sure to watch your dates. You won't be able to access the CASA application until it goes live, and you have to have them completed prior to the end date. If you don't, you won't be able to make any further changes or additions until you contact the system administrator to have them extended. There are two ways you can access the CASA system. Direct link using the URL, which is posted here, or through the quick link icon found in your MyUNB portal. The image on the right shows what that would look like. If you look about halfway down, you will see Nursing CASA. That link will take you into the CASA application. That link, as well as the direct link, are only for students and instructors. System administrators and coordinators are required to use a different link. My recommendation is to use the direct link via the URL. Once you use it, save it to your favorites so that you can access it at any time. The reason I suggest that is when you use the MyUNB portal and any applications that have been opened through it will time out if the portal has been opened for too long. When this happens, it won't tell you it has and it can affect your submissions. The CASA application operates on the following operating systems. Microsoft Windows, Apple Macintosh, and Linux and Unix, which essentially means you can access the CASA application where you have internet connection and a usable browser. Any recent version of Mozilla Firefox, Safari, and Chrome will support the CASA system. Internet Explorer 9 is not recommended as it is not compatible with many of UNB's technical components and therefore is not encouraged to be used. Also at this time, Windows 10 is not supported and can cause issues when using UNB applications. CASA for the Clinical Instructor. Once you access the CASA application, this is what you will see. This is essentially your home page. You will see all through the courses that you're associated with listed on this page. Located at the top of the page, you will notice a hyperlink to assessment form help. If at any time you require assistance, you can click on that link and it will open the most recent version of the CASA manual. Within each course, you will only see the students that you have been mapped with. You will notice the student's name is blue. It is a hyperlink that when clicked will open that student's individual CASA. If you follow to the right, you will see the type listed midway or final, then the instructor. This is where you will see your name listed as well as any other instructor mapped to that student in the course. The next column over is your assessment status. There are four different statuses, active and in progress, student sign off, assessment period ended and complete. 
Below the status, you can see the start and end date. These dates, are, these dates are significant for two reasons. First, the start date, which is also known as the CASA live date, which is the date that you'll be able to access the actual CASA application. The second date is the end date. This is the date you need to watch. Once this date has passed, you won't be able to make any adjustments or additions to the CASAs. If after this date you see the status, assessment period ended, it means that you need to contact your system administrator to extend your end date for you. The last column on the far right is where you'll find your supplementary documents. Both the supplemental document and the clinical learning summary is housed there. You will notice that they are two different types of links. The CLS is a hyperlink, so one click takes you into the CLS document. The supplemental link will generate a date-specific document every time you click on it. Do not click on it unless you want to generate a supplemental. You cannot delete it. You will need to contact your system administrator if you accidentally create a supplemental. Once you click on the student's name, it will open up their CASA, and this is what you will see. The CASA itself is all on one page that you scroll down. However, for the purposes of this presentation, I am going to go through it in separate sections. At the top of the page, you will see three hyperlinks, assessment form help, print assessment, and back to the assessment list. They are all self-explanatory. However, I do want to address the back to assessment list link. You should always use the back to assessment list link instead of the browser's back button. If you use the browser's back button, it can create issues within the CASA application. Scrolling down the page, you will notice instructor information, the student information for quick access to email. You will also notice total clinical hours missed. This lets you and the students keep track of their missed clinical hours. When you, when you add their hours into the system, it will automatically update their missed clinical hours. And to note, these are the clinical hours that are missed for this course specifically, not for their entire program. The dates are also listed so that you can ensure you are completing the CASA within the allotted time frame. Below you will notice it says assessment information. The student fills out this section. They will record the clinical area and the nature of their experience. As you scroll down the page, you will see the abilities and outcomes listed. The student will post for every outcome, but the instructor only posts per ability. Taking into consideration the student's responses and the instructor's own observations. To post a comment, you enter your comment into the text box and click on Submit Comment. Once submitted properly, you will get a message that says your comment was submitted successfully. I mention this because due to settings on some browsers and or the volume of people in the application, there can sometimes be a delay in posting of a comment. This is why you want to make sure that you see that message when you hit Submit. There are a couple of things that you can do to limit the probability of this happening. Change your browser's setting. In your browser settings, you can change how often your browser clears its cache. Usually a browser is set to clear its cache every 24 hours. You can set it to clear every time you refresh your page. This way, if you don't see your comment, you can refresh your page and see your comment right away. Use private, private browsing mode. If you open your private browser, your page will refresh every time automatically because it isn't set to save any browser information. Now, while we're on this topic of private browsing, I'm going to take this opportunity to mention that when you are holding a student meeting, if the student is using your computer, you always want that student's CASA opened in a private browser. If you don't, the next student that logs in will be able to see that student's information from the previous student. I always recommend instructors and students to write down their work in a Word document and then copy and paste it into the CASA application. This way, if there were anything to go wrong, you wouldn't lose your work. Also, keep in mind that you can only make edits to the last submitted comment. So before moving on, make sure you proofread your comment. You can always add additional comments, but you can't make any changes to previously posted comments. If you look to the far right, you will see ratings drop down box for each outcome. You have to rate each outcome in each ability. In the Midway CASA, you will have the option of Needs Development, Satisfactory, and Unsatisfactory as ratings. However, in the final CASA, you must choose between Satisfactory and Unsatisfactory. Once you get through all the abilities and outcomes in the Midway CASA, you have a Midway Summary for Strategies for Continued Growth. Both the student and the instructor fill out this part 
to outline where the student needs to focus to have a successful clinical experience. Scrolling all the way to the bottom, you will see where you enter clinical hours and sign off. To add clinical hours, you click on the Add Clinical Hours and Area hyperlink, which will generate a drop-down box where you choose the clinical area, as well as a text box where you can write in how many hours the student completed. Then you click on Submit. If you make an error, you are able to delete a submitted entry and resubmit your information. Before you can sign off, you have to hold your student meeting. You check off that you have met with a student and enter the date you met. Once this is completed, it will generate a sign-off box for the student. The student always signs off first. Once they sign off, it will then generate your sign-off option. Once you both sign off and check off that you understand the terms and conditions, the CASA will be complete. Also, once complete, you can no longer make any edits or additions to the CASA. If you find that you have to make a change to the CASA, touch base with your system administrator and ask them to reverse your sign-offs. As long as you are still within your dates, you will then be able to make changes to the CASA. You will just need to remember to sign off again. Supplementary documents. The unsafe practice policy was designed to help map out what to do in the case of observed unsafe practice. If you observe level three unsafe practice, you will meet with a student to discuss your concerns, and as long as they progress, then you can continue their assessment as usual. If the student does not progress, the level three unsafe practice will be escalated to a level two. Once a student is a level two, it automatically starts the supplemental process. This is when you will create a supplemental within their CASA and follow the directions within it. Examples of level two unsafe practice include, but are not limited to, repeated medication errors, inadequate knowledge about medications, or lack of preparation for patient care. If the student consistently demonstrates improvement and there is a positive progress, then you continue, can continue the assessment as per usual. If the student has failed to demonstrate consistent progress and more than two-thirds of the course has lapsed, it is an automatic NCR, which is a no credit for that course for that student. If the student has failed to demonstrate consistent progress, and two-thirds of the course has not lapsed, then you will be required to generate a new supplemental document and repeat the process. If the student's level two unsafe practice escalated to a level one, or a student demonstrates a level one unsafe practice, then it, is, it starts an immediate suspension process. Examples of level one unsafe practice include, but are not limited to, breach of patient confidentiality or privacy, display of violent behavior, consistent display of inappropriate nursing knowledge. Once the student requires the supplemental process to begin, you will access the CASA application as normal, and on your home page, you can click on the link to generate a new date-specific supplemental document. When you have generated a new supplemental document, you click on the link and it will open the supplemental for you. This is what the supplemental document looks like. All the student and instructor information is at the top along with the date it was created. You need to fill out all sections before a sign off option is available. And you will need to set a date for your follow up meeting. And when everyone has signed off, the follow up section will generate in which you make three, one of three choices. One, consistent implementation of strategies identified to demonstrate safe practice. Instructor will continue to assess clinical course outcomes. Two, continues to need development to consistently demonstrate safe practice, student will continue to implement strategies and or identify new strategies if appropriate in order to, de to demonstrate safe practice, instructors will continue to assess clinical course outcomes. Three, two thirds of the course has lapsed and the student has failed to consistently demonstrate safe practice. Instructor reports the failure to the course coordinator and the student is assigned an NCR for the course. The next supplementary document we'll be going over is a clinical learning summary. You access the CLS in the same manner as the supplemental document, log into the CASA application, and on the far right under supplementary documents, click on the blue hyperlink, clinical learning summary. This will take you to the student's individual CLS document. 
Once you're in the CLS document, you will notice the top of the document is a general description of what the CLS is. The CLS is a collaborative tool that includes contributions from both the student and the instructor. The content should originate from the student's reflections on their clinical experience and discussions with their clinical instructor. The student should work on their CLS prior to their final HASA meeting. The CLS document is intended to be completed only once the student has successfully completed the course. That being said, the student should have it prepared to be discussed after their final CASA has been completed. Once the student and instructor have reviewed the CLS together, the instructor will add their own comments and then they can both sign off. After the CLS has been signed off, the student will print it off for their records and hand it in to their next clinical instructor during their preclinical meeting. Here's a quick look at what the CLS document looks like. There are three sections to complete, and you will only be able to sign off once all three sections have been completed. That concludes the general overview of the electronic CASA format. Here are just a few points to remember. Watch your assessment period end dates. If you know you won't be able to complete the CASAs on time, contact your system administrator to have them extended. Do not click on the supplemental links unless you want to create one. You don't have the ability to, to delete a supplemental, so be careful not to create one unless you need to. If you do accidentally create one, contact your system administrator. The CLS is only completed if the student successfully completes the clinical course. The student will sign off first on the CASA document. However, they cannot sign off until the instructor records that they have met. Your CASA admin contacts in St. John are Rose McCluskey and Brenda Anthony, in Fredericton, Lindsay Fisher, and in Moncton, Shireen Slepsky.